Greetings, this is William Brieger. Welcome to the second part of our malaria prevention updates. In part one, we looked at the burden of malaria and the game-changing development and introduction of malaria vaccines as part of the toolkit. In this section, we'll examine drug-based prevention, chemo prevention, larva source management, uh, controlling mosquito larva, urban malaria with new vectors having been introduced into Africa, and climate change and its effect. Thank you for joining us. In addition to vaccines, there has been an expansion of drug-based prevention. We had mentioned the intermittent preventive treatment in pregnancy, a curative dose of sulfadoxin pyrimethamine. And that continues. Uh, we have the seasonal malaria chemo prevention for children. That is a type of intermittent preventive treatment. It's focused on countries that are have seasonal transmission. In other words, uh, there's very intense uh, malaria transmission during the rainy season. In the dry season, there's not as much. So the focus is, can we get uh, monthly doses to children living in those countries, in the Sahel in particular, um, and through the village health workers, uh, at least, again, th over three or four months of the transmission uh, period. So this has been uh, found to be uh, successful. The it's easy to integrate it into uh, community health worker projects and programs because, again, they're used to also delivering um, drugs for controlling neglected tropical diseases. And there is an effort to adapt this idea of the intermittent preventive treatment in areas where there are um, routine, regular transmission um, not the seasonal, and the idea of having full courses for children at highest risk for severe malaria in these other parts of the world. So on the 10th anniversary of the um, on the 10th anniversary of the seasonal malaria chemo prevention program, uh, UNITAID, one of our UN agencies reported that it in, reduces infections among children who receive it um, by more than 88%. Uh, this is a key achievement. As we said, the doses are distributed monthly by village health workers during the rainy season when typically malaria rates in these countries skyrocket. Okay, so the estimate is that since the program started, nearly three quarters of a million child lives have been saved. Another vector control measure that is receiving more attention, but there are challenges, of course, is the larval source management. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in water sources and they develop uh, and eventually into adult mosquitoes. Uh, but there are quite a number of, especially for the Anopheles, uh, water sources from pools and ponds to uh, puddles and other kinds of uh, situations that may or may not be um, able to be reached. But basically, these pools normally form through rainfall, which again, why the seasonal um, malaria chemo prevention focuses on the rainy season when uh, country those countries experience an, uh, an uptick in malaria. Okay, CDC po points out that uh, the larva control could be implemented through environmental modification, uh, draining or filling these uh, ponds, these potholes, um, use of larvicides that actually kill the mosquito larva or through biologic controls such as fish. Now, again, you're not going to put fish in a small puddle. So all of these, each of these has limitations in terms of where and how they can be used. Uh, some of the 
uh, limitations are the fact that there are widely dispersed and transient water habitats. For example, after rain and cattle walk through, the hoof prints uh, collect water, and those can be uh, mosquito breeding sites. But you're not going to have a major effort to um, control those sites, to improve the environment. To, what are you going to do with the cattle? Uh, you won't be able to use uh, the larvicide. So it's it's not ideal where the, the smaller types of water uh, sites. There is a new vector we'll talk about, uh, Anopheles stevensi, that has uh, come into Africa from Asia, and it is an urban vector, unlike uh, the uh, others that we've seen. And so it can breed in water storage containers, cisterns and buckets, in, in other words, in people's homes and uh, compounds. And so this presents a whole different kinds of challenge. You can't be uh, modifying these, although it's left up to the individual homeowner to try to um, control the, those sites on their property. Uh, with larvicides, generally, there may be environmental impacts, and still, uh, the larval source management should be one of several measures that we continue to include in our toolkit and apply it when the conditions are right. And WHO publications offer us guidance on this. As we mentioned, the Anopheles sivensi has moved into Africa. Uh, it can transmit both Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax. Uh, the vivax is not as common in Africa. As we said, falciparum is the main species, but vivax is um, more common in the uh, eastern horn of Africa. Uh, you can see a map from WHO that shows the countries that so far have reported the spread of this uh, Anopheles sivensi. Um, and the years associated, so it will obviously continue. Uh, but again, unlike uh, the main uh, vectors, um, it, instead of breeding outside in pools of water, it thrives in urban man-made environments. And so far, like I said on the map, seven countries have been affected. The key issue of, of uh, continuing to try to eliminate malaria is reliant on innovations that come from continued research. We have uh, improved nets through continued research, uh, looking at the uh, problems of the insecticide resistance and learning that if you put two insecticides on the net, it will help. Of course, that will add to the expense, but it's necessary. Uh, things such as sugar baits that have um, an insecticide in them can be uh, put on the side of houses so that the mosquitoes will even take that before going into the house and biting people. There are spatial repellents, not just uh, spraying on the wall, but spatial repellents that can reach mosquitoes in the air. Mosquitoes have changed their biting behavior in some places where they are more focused on outside uh, because of interventions that have insecticides inside the house and the time of day they bite. So these spatial repellents and the sugar baits on the outside of the house will help. Um, and decticides, the human person can be uh, a controlled measure. It was discovered that ivermectin, the drug that's used annually to control um, the microfilaria of onchocerciasis or river blindness also kills uh, mosquitoes. If a person has taken ivermectin as part of the onchocerciasis control effort, and this is only annually, if mosquitoes bite that person within the next uh, few days, they will uh, take in the ivermectin and die. Now, the question of how to organize that to be an effective ongoing intervention uh, needs to be addressed. And people probably have heard about gene drive, uh, changing the mosquito DNA uh, that, that will um, make it impossible for them to, to reproduce. 
course, the challenges of any genetically modified creature raise some concerns. But again, these are some of the research that are going on that will help us get new tools to work toward 2030. Climate change is one of the biggest challenges affecting all kinds of diseases, not just malaria. But because the mosquitoes and the parasite are sensitive to changes in temperature, humidity, and rainfall, uh, <clears throat> they can, you know, climate change can affect where mosquitoes breed, where malaria will spread. Uh, very dry areas may see a drop in malaria. Uh, areas in higher altitudes as it warms may see more mosquitoes coming in and more malaria. There are various kinds of things we need to be on the lookout for. And basically with more extreme weather events such as heat waves and flooding, uh, we get more opportunities for mosquito breeding. Uh, the catastrophic flooding in Pakistan in 2022 led to a five-fold increase in malaria cases in the country because of the increase in breeding sites. So looking ahead, uh, we have a chart from WHO that shows the three countries that have been certified as free from malaria. Um, we see that um, Mauritius, Cabo Verde, um, and well, Seychelles are islands, and in theory, that should help protect them, although they get visitors from the mainland. Uh, Algeria is in the northern part of Africa. Um, so Lesotho it has a question of altitude. It can even snow in Lesotho, which people don't expect in Africa. We just hope that the uh, climate change and the warming does not bring mosquitoes into Lesotho. But there's a long way to go, as you can see, with only these five countries on the continent free of malaria at present. So basic implementation, basic research, uh, biological research, drug research, implementation research to apply the new interventions must continue so that we can refine what we already have on, on the ground and discover new things. And therefore, we will need to continue to deploy multi-intervention toolkit to guarantee that we will free the world from malaria by hopefully 2030, um, if not a little bit later. So thank you for joining our talk and hopefully this information will be useful for you in thinking about your careers, possibly in uh, tropical medicine. Take care. Bye-bye.